President Biden and his South Korean counterpart meeting in D.C. Peace, stability, freedom and nuclear deterrence are up for discussion as aggression and threats rise in the region. Two nearby nations, China and North Korea, behind much of that concern. How will the situation play out? What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. This program is brought to you by Preserve Gold, the number one precious metals IRA provider. Call 855-962-3322. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Vowing to deter nuclear threats from North Korea, President Biden is announcing a new agreement with South Korea. He also reacted to concerns over his 2024 bid for re-election. NTD's Iris Tao has more from the Rose Garden. The U.S. and South Korea announcing a key new agreement on Wednesday to deter rising threats from North Korea. As part of the pledge, the U.S. will send nuclear submarines to South Korea for the first time in 40 years. Our mutual defense treaty is ironclad. They're particularly important in the face of DPRK's increased threats. The announcement marks the climax of a six-day state visit to the U.S. by South Korean President Yoon suk yeol And as the two reaffirm what they call a value alliance that is strong, resilient and sustainable. President Biden delivers a blunt warning to North Korea, saying a nuclear attack and will result in the end of whatever regime were to take such an action. And in return for the submarines, South Korea is reaffirming its commitment to not develop its own nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, the move to strengthen alliance with South Korea comes as the Biden administration is pivoting to focus more on the Indo-Pacific region, especially as China is expanding its influence and increasingly posing threats to Taiwan. We discussed our work together on promoting peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Reporting from the White House, Iris Tao, NTD News. While South Korea's president visits the U.S., Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is traveling to South Korea. Ahead of DeSantis's possible 2024 run for president, he's on what's been called an international trade mission. It features stops in Japan and South Korea, but not the world's second largest economy, China. He's also skipping the globe's number one microchip maker, Taiwan. The trip appears focused on burnishing his foreign policy credentials ahead of the possible run for the White House. The governor is calling for greater cooperation with Japan and South Korea, two major U.S. allies in the Indo-Pacific. Touching on the threat from the Chinese Communist Party, he spoke to Fox News on Tuesday while in Japan. The governor laid out a strategy for countering the regime's influence. Here's what he had to say. We cannot allow the CCP to produce every critical uh, part of our economy. We re rely on them for almost everything. We need to bring that back to America so we're producing it here in the United States and we're not at the whim of the communist Chinese. I'm going to be signing legislation very soon eliminating the, uh, the possibility of CCP land purchases in Florida. DeSantis referred to Chinese nationals who are buying American farmland, often located close to American military bases. He was also asked about how to deal with a possible Chinese invasion of Taiwan. According to DeSantis, Chinese leader Xi Jinping responds to strength. DeSantis says President Biden appears weak on the world stage, which allows China to expand its power. A new revelation about Beijing's police operations on foreign soil. The DOJ recently charged 40 Chinese police officials with transnational repression schemes targeting U.S. citizens. A new probe finds one of the officers charged received training in Canada. Here are the details. Canadian website Found in Translation reported on the investigation last week, citing a Chinese social media post from 2017. In it, 26-year-old Chun Chun shares his experience with studying at the Justice Institute of British Columbia, a police academy based in BC, Canada. At the time, Chun was a student at the People's Public Security University of China. The college is under the direct control of the Chinese Communist Party's Ministry of Public Security. The Canadian Academy has offered training to thousands of Chinese law enforcement students, police, and judges since 2013. 
the program aims to make a difference in authoritarian judicial systems. But critics caution it may feed Beijing's foreign influence, espionage, and human rights abuses abroad. The Chinese regime's military, armed forces, and police are themselves institutions and tools for squashing the people. As a democratic country, helping the CCP with such training will aid its power to suppress the people. Calls for a Foreign Agents Registration Act, modeled from the U.S. version, are now gaining momentum in Canada. An intensifying tug of war between President Biden and some House lawmakers over solar panels. The White House saying on Monday that President Biden would veto a House bill if it passes. That's because should the bill go through, it would overturn Biden's decision to suspend certain U.S. tariffs, specifically those on solar panels from four southeastern Asian countries. Here are the details. The bipartisan bill could come up for a full vote in the House as soon as this week. But how did it come to this point? And what's all the controversy surrounding solar panels? Here's the background. For years, American solar panel makers have been struggling to compete with products from China. They have to contend with the country's state-backed subsidies. That means Chinese solar panels are sold at a price that's so low, it's very hard to compete with. In response, the U.S. slapped tariffs on Chinese solar imports. But here's another twist. U.S. solar panel makers suspect China has been evading tariffs through four southeastern Asian countries. America gets over 80 percent of its solar panel imports from these countries. Last year, at the request of an American solar panel company called Oxen, the Commerce Department started investigating the issue. And the ongoing investigation halted most solar panel imports at the time. The holdup delayed solar projects across America. As a result, American companies that install solar panels were upset. They say the investigation could hold up America's transition into clean energy, and that the resulting delay could cost the industry billions of dollars. To address that, President Biden decided to pause tariffs on solar imports from Southeast Asia for two years. The effort sought to create a buffer while domestic manufacturers ramp up production. Later, the Commerce Department found some Chinese solar panel makers dodged U.S. tariffs. That's by moving products through Southeast Asia. Some bipartisan House lawmakers are now pushing a bill to overturn Biden's decision, saying American companies need to be protected from China's unfair trade practices. But the bill is facing pushback, mainly from solar industry groups and some congressional Democrats. They say adding the tariff would increase costs and delay solar projects. The White House says it also strongly opposes the bill, arguing that Biden's policy has worked. A Democrat that co-sponsored the House bill disagrees. Representative Dan Kildee said China has been found to have violated our trade laws, yet the United States has failed to respond, including suspending tariffs and letting their unlawful behavior go unanswered. Zooming out, an analysis expects Chinese-controlled solar panel makers to sell more products in America, growing their market share to 45 percent, a 3 percent uptick. That prediction comes from PV Tech. Chinese solar panel makers are also eyeing certain U.S. subsidies meant for boosting domestic clean energy manufacturing. Three Chinese solar panel makers are in the process of building plants in America, one in South Carolina, one in Ohio, and one in Arizona. Chinese leader Xi Jinping spoke with his Ukrainian counterpart Zelensky Wednesday, marking their first time speaking since Russia invasion of Ukraine last year. Zelensky describing the hour-long phone call as long and meaningful. He added in a statement, quote, there can be no peace at the expense of territorial compromises. Xi said China will send a special envoy to Ukraine and other countries to help conduct in-depth communication with all parties for political settlement of the Ukrainian crisis. That's according to Chinese state media. While acknowledging Russia's actions as a crisis for Ukraine, Xi has yet to use the word invasion. The call comes just days after China's ambassador to France, Lu Shaiye, said on TV that former Soviet countries have no effective status in international law. His comments sparked an international uproar, with even Beijing publicly distancing the country from him. 
More than $600 million. That's the sum British American Tobacco agreed to in a settlement. The company was accused of violating U.S. sanctions by selling tobacco products to North Korea. Criminal charges were brought against one national from North Korea and two from China. NDD's Cost Jimenez has more details on the story. The settlement pertained to tobacco sales made between 2007 and 2017. It is the single largest North Korea sanctions penalty in Justice Department history. This case and, and others like it do serve as a, as a warning shot to companies, um, companies that, uh, that support rogue regimes like North Korea uh, through, their, through their activities that they have to have compliance programs. North Korea faces an array of U.S. sanctions to choke off funding for its nuclear and ballistic missile program. British American Tobacco said it has entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the Justice Department. One of its subsidiaries in Singapore, BAT Marketing Singapore, pleaded guilty. The company's CEO issued a statement saying, We deeply regret the misconduct arising from historical business activities that led to these settlements and acknowledge that we fell short of the highest standards rightly expected of us. The Justice Department on Tuesday also disclosed related criminal charges against one North Korean banker, as well as two Chinese facilitators, all of whom remain at large. The U.S. Department of State is offering a reward of $5 million and $500,000 respectively for information leading to their capture. Cost MNS, NTD News. A new currency is rising on the global stage. For the first time, the Chinese yuan overtook the U.S. dollar for trade in March between China and neighboring countries. Based on data from the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, cross-border payments and receipts in yuan rose to a record $550 billion in March, from $434 billion a month earlier. Other calculations show the yuan was used in over 48 percent of all cross-border transactions. That's up from nearly zero in the year 2010. On the other hand, the U.S. dollar clocked in at close to 47 percent, dropping from 83 percent in 2010. The currency's boost reflects longtime efforts by Beijing to internationalize the currency. But worth noting, the numbers come from mainland China and Hong Kong's capital markets. They don't represent transactions used by the rest of the world. Its use in global trade remains low, though it has shown steady increases. According to banking system SWIFT, the yuan's share in global payments saw little change at just over 2 percent in March. SWIFT data showed that the yuan's share of global currency transactions for trade finance rose to 4.5 percent in March. China is handing over the title of the world's most populous country to a key U.S. partner. Is Beijing losing its demographic dividend? Here's a closer look. We are here today because the world population is reordering itself. UN demographer Rachel Snow said Wednesday that the Earth's population will top 8 billion in November, the largest the world has ever seen. More than one-third of that number made up by China and India. Of the two, India's population is on track to overtake China's by about three million by mid-year. Some Indian citizens say they see the boom as both a challenge and an opportunity. So in my opinion, overpopulation or overcrowding is a demeaning factor for our subcontinent because the natural resources are depleting and at the same time the population is increasing. India is having the greatest youth population. We are going to help the entire world to grow. China has held the world's largest population count since the UN census began decades ago. As a demographic dividend, the country's low-cost labor has aided in its rise as the world's factory. But for the first time last year, China's population saw a decline, with a birth rate hitting all-time lows at less than seven per thousand people. That's only half the figure for India. If the trend continues, in 30 years, the U.S. will have a higher birth rate than China. Beijing is downplaying the shift. A foreign spokesman stated that the demographic dividend depends not only on the total number, but also on the quality. But experts say India's growing labor force will stress China's economy. 
Data shows that in 2022, India's average age was about 29, almost a decade younger than China's average. Earlier this month, India's finance minister said the country aims to become an alternative to China in the world's supply chain. An emerging power in Asia, India is seen as a major counterweight to Beijing's influence in the region. It's also an important partner for the United States. Both the U.S. and India are members of the Quad, a four-nation diplomatic network to counter China's aggression in the Indo-Pacific. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. President Biden meeting with his South Korean counterpart, Yoon Suk-yeol. The Asian country is a major U.S. ally. Right now, it's facing off against two communist neighbors, China and North Korea. How big is their nuclear threat in the region? We spoke to Morse Tan, former U.S. ambassador at large for global criminal justice, for details. This is a dangerous, dangerous situation. Uh, North Korea has threatened to use nuclear weapons repeatedly. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. A performance that truly matters for each and every one of us. This is what you've been waiting for. See it at least once in your lifetime. Get tickets now at shenyun.com.